Hi, everyone. Welcome to Ocean X Live. My name is Jessica Bright, and I am a part of the digital team at Ocean X, and I'm thrilled to welcome you to today's live classroom. Ocean X is a mission to explore the ocean and bring it back to the world. We are currently underway on the Red Sea Decade Expedition in partnership with the National Center for Wildlife. This expedition is all about a complete about all about building a complete scientific picture of the Red Sea from the depths to the shallows, north to south, microbes to whales. Our speaker tonight is Afra Olothman, a marine science PhD student specializing in diatoms and bacteria interaction at Kaus. Before we begin, we want to remind you that we will have time at the end of the presentation for questions, so be thinking of those and have them ready. And now let's get right to it. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ahlan wa sahlan bi jami'a al-tullab wa al-talibat. Ana al-ismi Afrah al-Uthman, talibat dikum. Hello everybody, this is Ayyusni, I'm Afrah. This is from the, uh, I'm from King, King Ulum, King Science. So today now I'm talking about in the ship of the XX stroller. And we have a lot of team and, and crew on this ship. We have based a, a lot of scientific and research beyond this, the Red Sea before the, as you see now, the Red Sea behind me. So today we are going to take, to take you in a tour the, in my research. And I hope that to be my research, if so, in, so, and I, I, I hope to be my, you, my research so fascinated and to get all the ideas from it. So as you have seen, I'm here, I'm, a, I know before the high school, I we have studied about the scientific, scientific, scientific about also that about the nutrition, the nutrition cycle that we have. This is the sea nutrition cycle, as you have seen now. We start from the bacteria and the, and also the. Then we're gonna grow up and then we're gonna reach also the the, the sharks and also the the fishes in the in the red sea so based, uh, regard regarding my research i i in concentrate on three points three points of the nutrition circle the first one there is uh, there is a complex allergic plus plus bacteria and then also we have a competitive competition for nutrition and for the cons consumers and nutrition also I that, that I focused more about this part also where I got my samples I collect my sample from the Red Sea uh, utilizing a special equipment that put it uh, that put that can be breached any deep, deep in the sea in order to make a special operation on the uh, on these samples. So what I do after that, I I put this in adaptation, in adaptation adaptation equipment. This this is the adaptation equipment that I use it in a special climate and a special weather in order not be affected by another something by so we have these tanks it's also collected collected with a some with a with a system that it's going to be recycling the water in the red sea so we have here the the water is going to be out of the out of the sea we have re, we have circled so that's we have so we save the same degree, the temperature temperature of the water. Also, this is the this system that help us to to get the, the sun, the the sunlight. So without any 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 system any system for the sunlight. Also, we have got another sample of the from the depth of four of four hundred of the sea. So the, it's also different from, it's also the degree of these samples that will reach 21 degrees. So we have to keep these samples in this tank and we will, we and we have to connect it on this, the, the, uh, this machine that would keep them 
will they give him a cooling and a good weather to in, to be in the same weather that they have to be in the climate. So this is what I have. So now we're gonna move how to gonna collect the sample from the sea and how gonna do it. So let's keep watching and stay with me, stay tuned. So we are working, walking here inside the laboratory. We will move into the laboratory that we call it What Lab, Wet Lab, because you have to gonna get the samples from the sea and you're gonna put the wet sample here inside this machine. So please keep watching. We have here, this is the sample that we have here. This is uh, uh, the, the water of the sea. What we have here, we, we, we connected with a filter. This filter is going to be, is, is, con, is consist of, of the same sample that we, we you are going to work on it. If you have, for example, you have, if you are going to work on a, a bacteria, you are going to use the same samples. You have, if you are going to select another type of thing, you, you have to, to choose another filter type or an, another filter size. So this is, it depends on what you have to, what, what, you, what your project is on. It's, so we will take the, the water and we will do a filtration. We will, we will make it, we will, we will make it a clear. We will, everything that we will, we, and we will, and we're gonna focus on the cons consumers. So this is, uh, we, we have to remove every single bacteria and we have to keep the bacteria just the bacteria alive here so now i'm gonna add the treatments to it when and when i finish that i will i will get to the next step so this is the part is go is considered as at the first part of the our mission so now i'm going to show you how we're gonna transfer this the samples from this uh, from the first part into and we will put it to the matrix transport so and now we will gonna show you how, how how many types and how many types of bacteria we have and also also we will con, con count it uh, how many bacteria that we have are we gonna connect it all of this data into uh, the re results that we will get it on uh, for, and we will give it to the uh, customer the co consumers and also we're gonna discover that how much is going to be affected uh what's the difference between the deep water and the and the shallow water and also we will discover the what how much the uh, first nutrition cycle in what we we need it also we have to to discover that how much that that the temperature degree is so important so we have to clarify every details here and also the uh, uh, we the Red Sea is considered as an isolated sea in, uh, in, in, in the, in the, uh, from, the, from the north and the, also the south section. So this, we have to move from the south. So, so the, the environment of the Red Sea is really amazing. So it's really, we have to, uh, to understand what's going in the other seas and other oceans in the world. So this is this is eighty percent of the globe. The, so this is it's considered as a uh, as a critical or uh, model for other this, uh, in order to to differentiate from other oceans. So we have to focus on the the same the the, the basic. We have to focus on the basic, uh, uh, basic information and the basic st uh, study and how to know how to the products, who's going to be the products and who's the consumer of this, of the Red Sea. Where we're gonna 
we're gonna find my my sample where where is the best exactly part or the area that i got uh, that was gonna be a beneficial samples for me and for the fishes also so now after we have finished it from downstairs from the lab and i saw you every the, the first part of this commission now we're gonna so now we're gonna to get into uh, the micro the deep the second part of the dips and we're gonna uh, enter to the microscope microscope we're gonna use microscope now to show you so this lab is his name as the dry laboratory so because we don't have to be wet anything even though the bacteria it's not we have to be a weight so as i told you and I, the nutrition cycle it's gonna start from the small species of the uh, sea and then it's gonna be and it's gonna bigger and it's gonna start to be, grow up gradually until we're gonna fit, uh, reach out the uh, fishes and the walls so for example, for example the bacteria we can count it but now we have a, a we have a more more we have a uh, this is considered as a this is a machine that we use it for we we, we have a lasers here three three steps of the uh, three t uh, colors of the lasers we have red orange and a green orange of that that's why we have we have it's that can indicate the chlorophyll inside this process so this we indicate as how to size and how to scale the chlorophyll amount in each the bacteria that we have so we're gonna open the laser now we just turn on turn it on so we have we have a circulation here and then we're gonna put also the what you have here in the bit microscope this is but this is, is, is a more more it's a modern type of microscope you can see that so for the regarding the bacteria sample here we have here that for the bacteria bacteria is not have any of so how are we gonna augmentation so how are we gonna we have cyber green cyber green this is as uh, uh, this is a special for the bacteria that it's a be a that when it's it's a, it is it is be stick to the bacteria it's going to uh, to it's going to reduce uh, provide a, a green color so here, here we have a green and we have also the the bay the, the the essential color it is the red and this is the account of the bacteria that we have okay regarding the bigger bacteria size we we're gonna we're gonna take um uh, another we're gonna use another uh, machine this is a, it's a modern machine that we use it and also the microscope we put it in a chamber or slide here and we're gonna look at it for the this is as i told you that this is is the bacteria that it's bigger in a size from the of the the, the previous one so this is what you are seeing here. This is Kobo, but it's as something related to the micro. It's based on the, it's on the, so when, when we move, when we move here, we have, we have see the zobmetin. This is it's something related to the bacteria. And now we're gonna move upper. So even this is zobmectin and Cool. everything that you have seen and it's a circle shape it's considered as a piece of actin and the actins this is the actins you can i'm gonna move a little bit upper so please concentrate that there is something here something different shapes of them that this is a different shape of them also this is the plankton and this is, is it is a fixed sample that it's not movement there's no move there's nothing moving here so if we put if you put the atomical uh, uh, material that you're gonna realize that the uh, zogmatin is going to be moving so i hope that i give you this 
research that you'll be influenced in and it's gonna be motivated you to to select your your major in the next uh, in your university and thank you very much thank you so much afra for that wonderful presentation um if you're joining us the YouTube, feel free to put your questions in the YouTube chat if you're joining us from the classrooms on the Zoom call, is please it, use the right is hand function on Zoom. And I have a question to take things off. Uh, Afra, what advice would you have for students who want to pursue a similar career path as you? I can't hear you. Jessica, Jessica, can you repeat the question? Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, are you able to hear me better now? Yes. Okay. Uh, my first question to you was, what advice would you have for students who want to pursue a similar career path? What would I tell them? Mm -hmm. This is a, um, this is a part of uh, specialty that really need uh, effort and need uh, need hard work because you are requested sometimes to work on uh, live samples and in situ environment like in the sea and this can be hard you know especially like we i have been in a cruises where it was winter and it was windy and it was like we got sick and it was like it was almost like very impossible to do the experiments but if you are really dedicated to your work and you really have the passion you will overcome all the challenges and you can you can do it of course and um, you just have to believe that you can do it, no matter how hard. You know, some people think that, oh, my God, it's the deep sea. It's going to be very hard. How I'm going to reach the deep sea? How, how I'm going to collect samples from the deep sea? How I'm going to spend very long time in the sea? I mean, all of these questions are coming to your mind because you didn't experience it yet. But once you start your experience, uh, believe me, it will be all easy. You will enjoy. and you know, the experience that you, you will get inside the sea is totally different than wherever you are living now on the ground. Well, going off of that, I think focusing more on some of your positive experiences, we do have a... Cool reach uh, the very deep uh, water at the beginning I was scared because I didn't know what to, to expect you know this is my first time yeah. being uh, really inside the deep water but at the same time I was very exciting because you know you're watching what is inside the water usually in tv so yourself being able to see that alive and participate on transferring what whatever you is there to the audience outside this is a really great the sea is really dark, it's really quiet. At the same time, like you, you will wonder because you know that there is a food competition. There is a competition about the place. I mean, there is a growing there. There is a lot of things going on inside. But despite of all of that, it's really quiet. So it's like a different, a different life. Uh, so it was great. And it was, for me, it was, a, I would call it a one life experiment. experience. Yeah. I'm, I'm very happy that I was able to go into the deep, see the shark myself. Uh, I saw many shapes of fish that I never saw them before. A colorful fish. I mean, I saw very great uh, corals. I mean, it was, it was a really, really great, yeah. Going off of that, I just, I obviously have never been down in the sub, and I think most people haven't. Um, if you want to, can you go into more detail about uh, the fish and the coral that you were seeing of what it looks like to be so deep underwater and how different they look? I mean, corals is not my specialty, but I can tell that uh, the place where is the corals inside in the deep of the sea, it's clearly you can see that it's live there. You will see like uh, many fish around, many like... Uh, you know, everything is, is getting together around the coral. They try to get use of whatever the coral is giving them because the coral is very reachable, you know, organism in the ocean. Uh, so, yeah, and they look amazing. They have different colors. They have different shapes. Uh, 
I think already Ocean X uh, in their YouTube channel, they already have uh, published uh, pictures and videos of the corals. You can see them, they are so amazing. Yes, it's quite literally a different world when you go down in a submarine and it's amazing that yeah. that is part of uh, Earth. And going off of a different YouTube question, someone wanted to know what are some of the challenges of collecting deep sea samples and how you're able to overcome them? Well, the thing that uh, you will need to use a certain operation system to do that, because, uh, you know, when you go into the deep water, is more pressure, it's very hard to control the instruments that goes into the water. So uh, for me, for the surface water, the system that I'm using to collect the water is it was totally different. I mean, in the surface water, I was doing it by my hand, basically. I have the this big Niskin bottle, maybe you can see it in the pictures when you go into my, the articles that was published about me. I was like really taking this big uh, bottle and put it down like up to 20, 25 meters. That, that's okay. That's, it's, it's, not, it's difficult, it's still very heavy and you need to control the instruments to be vertical in the sea, but it, it, it can be, it's possible. But when you want to collect water from deep water, like 400 meter, and more, then you need to use uh, certain instruments like a CTD, an ROV, or a submarine, which I basically use them all to collect my deep sea water samples. <laughs> yeah. And also you have to be aware of uh, the depth that you're looking for. Because if you are, for example, want uh, to measure primary production, then you may find nothing in 400 meters. Maybe you need to just look at 200 meters and above. But if you want to measure bacteria production and you will see the, car the carbon when it's transferred from the surface to the deep water, here where you want to take a water from 400 meters and more. So you need also to look at the goal, like why you, you want the deep sample. And looking at the goal, you will determine how you will take the sample. For me, I need water. Some people know need coral. Some people need, I don't know, different uh, phytoplankton samples, so blanks and samples, so they, they are going to be different in astronomy. With the recent technology that we have, I don't think there is anything that difficult. Everything is, is possible. Yeah. But again, if it's windy, this is the most, the most challenging thing to take a sample from the deep water because actually when it, when it was windy, we couldn't deploy the, the instruments into the deep water because this will be, we may lose the instruments, it's very dangerous. So yeah, always like the weather is, is against us as a marine scientist. <laughs> I'm glad it's not just us being affected by the weather. It's everybody wishing for yeah. sunnier days. Um, I can assure you that. <laughs> we just wanted to take a moment to ask if anyone in the class on Zoom, um, if they have any questions, you can just use the raise hand feature. We'd love to hear from you. If not, um, we do have another question from our YouTube chat uh, that was wondering, what makes the Red Sea so particularly interesting to study? Well, this is a very key question about that. Maybe uh, when you want to publish a paper about the Red Sea, maybe many reviewers, they're gonna ask, I mean, what is the Red Sea? Why the Red Sea is important compared to, I don't know, the Pacific or uh, the Atlantic Ocean? Well, that's why we needed to explain the uh, importance of the Red Sea. First, Red Sea is a very unique environment because you have a very high temperature environment, which basically compared to the other uh, uh, world uh, seas and ocean, you don't see this temperature. And the Red Sea, the, temperature can, the sea surface temperature can reach up to 33 degrees. And even when you go into the deep water up to 400 meters, still you can see the temperature is considered to be high 21. So this unique, um, unique environment, you can actually imply this to other oceans, what could happen to them when the temperature increases in the future because of the climate change. So whatever is happening uh, in the ecosystem there and the food chain or whatever uh, uh, inside this ecosystem, you can actually employ it to other ecosystems as well who might face the same changes in the future. Also, the Red Sea is very unique because it's isolated from north and south. So there is not a lot of uh, species migration and not a lot of uh, uh, nutrients inputs to the Red Sea. 
So this makes uh, the, the biodiversity of the Red Sea is very unique. So there are some species that maybe you cannot find outside of the Red Sea, for sure. So let's see if anyone in our live class has any questions. I just want to make sure I give them a moment. I know sometimes Sure. I'm trying to formulate a question in my head, but let's see if anyone raises their hands. If not at this moment, um, we would love to hear from somebody, um, but I have a million questions I can always ask Afra. Um, I kind of wanted to go back uh, when you were talking about your first sub dive experience, it, you seem so excited. I, um, I wanted to ask what your other favorite part about being on the ocean explorer was besides going down in the sub. Wow, oh, everything about ocean explorer was unique and different. I mean, I had my first ROV dive, which was really great. I have my first submarine dive, which was also great. I had, uh, I was able to deploy uh, Niskan bottles by myself, which was also really great. Uh, we were able to see the geographical changes in the sea by ourselves because we have the monitors everywhere, even in the dining area, which is really great. Um, we also experienced uh, the high technology, of course, uh, materials and instruments there. So that make our experiments more easy to, uh, to process. Uh, many things, I can't count, many things. Food. Also food. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard, yes, that the food is mostly everybody's favorite part on the ship, which I find wonderful yeah. but it's also hilarious considering there are the sub dives and i've seen people yeah, but, but let's say who cares about food we have a, a submarine dive <laughs> that's true <laughs> um let's see if there are any more questions coming through if any of the classes would like to i know it's scary to turn off your camera but we'd love to hear from you um if not I was curious during your presentation when you were using um, the microscope and it was going on to the screen. I was curious if you're mostly looking at the screen or if you're looking down into the microscope and how that technology uh, works. Cause that's something I had never seen before when I was in science classes, we were always just had the tiny microscope and I was trying to squint my eyes very hard to see what was under the slides. Well, you get used to it, you know, after, after many times you are looking at the microscope, you, it's become like experience, it's a routine thing for you. But of course, like you need a very long time when you work on the microscope, you need uh, long hours, especially if you want to count cells, that may really take, each sample may take long hours. So by now using the flow cytometry instruments, you are saving hours, you can actually count the cells in two minutes in each sample. So you are like reducing, I don't know, from one to two hours to two minutes. This is really the kind of technology that uh, we need to develop and we need to use uh, as a scientist. Uh, but still, you need always to come back to the microscope. The microscope is a very basic technique that uh, will assure you of what you are seeing. Uh, I mean, you cannot be 100% sure. Uh, about what the software is giving you unless you, you did a calibration before, which means you already checked some of the samples in the microscope and you did kind of uh, calibration between the microscope count, for example, on this machine count, and you see if there is difference, big difference or not. By this, you, you are sure. And also if you have a contamination in the samples or you see a weird data, you need always to come back to the microscope because the microscope cannot lie. Whatever you see under the microscope is, is what is there. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. The microscope cannot lie. We should put that on. No, like mother. <laughs> <laughs> we should put that on a t-shirt. Um, I think we're almost getting ready to wrap up. If anyone has any last minute questions, please do use the raise hand function. Um, but if not, we have a wonderful question from our YouTube, um, they were wondering, what do you hope, uh, 
what do you hope the impact of what you're studying will be? The impact on what, like specifically or just in general, what's the impact? Yeah, I think there- And science the, and science. Yeah, well, how that will impact the scientific field, um, what you're hoping to find or hoping will become of your studies. Sure. I mean, we do have a very basic and fact and information about food chain and food web that we also study in our elementary school and high school. But actually now with the changes in the environment and in the ecosystem, these might change us, you know? Uh, people used to know the food web that, oh, it just starts with fish, but actually this is not true. The food web is not starting with fish. The fish needs something to eat, to grow. So it's actually started with a smaller organisms than, than the fish and a sm more smaller organisms than you can even see by your eyes. So this is very important for you to understand because, because for example, if you are looking at a hot spot in the Red Sea or in, in, in general in the ocean for economic, for example, or you need to know what the food source is there because this is what makes this spot rich and uh, more biodiversity and have more uh, either economically or for the ecosystem, more biodiversity. It's the food source is very important. And when I'm talking about the food source, I'm not talking only about inorganic nutrients like nitrate or phosphate or uh, the other elements. I'm talking about the, the food that can, can go to the high tropic levels and the food chain, like uh, to the zooplankton and the fish and in the whales, the sharks and, and more than that. So my study is really telling us what's going on in the food chain in the Red Sea, in the surface and in the deep, considering that the, the strong light that the Red Sea is receiving on the surface, the high temperature that also the Red Sea is experiencing, the depletion of nutrients and the low nutrients that the Red Sea is experiencing. So all of these factors What's the impact of these factors in the food chain and the biodiversity in the Red Sea? This is what my study is, is going to reveal. That's amazing. Um, that's absolutely incredible. And looking at the time, it is time for us to begin wrapping things up. So we'd like to say thank you, Afra, for sharing your work with us and giving us You're a look very at the Red Sea Decade Expedition. Uh, it was a wonderful presentation and wonderful Q&A. And thank you to the National Center for Wildlife and for their partnership on this expedition. And a thank you to the students and teachers to, who tuned in with us and for your excellent questions. And we're so glad everyone could be here with us tonight. We will be hosting more live talks with scientists on board the Ocean Explorer as our expedition continues. And you can find all those details on our social channels where we are at Ocean X. And thanks again, everyone, and see you next time. And thank you, Afra. Thank you.